Hi there and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies and Happy Mother's Day. I figured since the date of airing of this video is going to be on Mother's Day that it was um, only suiting that maybe I talk about a few of my uh, memories that I have of my mother and my grandmother and how they are so with me all the time when I'm outside in the garden and uh, playing in the dirt. So I'm also going to uh, show you quickly how to take some cuttings from geraniums so that you can propagate them and kind of multiply a, you know, a plant like this into many more that you can spread into uh, other containers or out into your garden. And I also want to share a little story as to why this particular geranium plant is so special to me. So in early January 2018, my mother was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And of course, this was devastating news to her and to the family. Uh, she was a very young, 72 years old at that time, um, very active, very healthy woman who um, enjoyed spending winters with my father in Arizona golfing and she loved um, hiking. She hiked the uh, uh, Grand Canyon twice, I believe. And in the summertime, she loved to garden um, here in Saskatchewan. So the do doctor basically said that there was no chance of recovery and uh, it could be, you know, a few months to a couple years. And sadly, within three months, um, my mom passed away. It was on April 2nd. So that week after my mom passed away, when we were all gathering um, at mom and dad's house, uh, one of the family members was downstairs and came across a couple of her geranium plants that she had you know, put away in the fall in the basement. And this was something my mom did every year. She took her geranium plants, pot and all, just cut them down, uh, let them go dormant, left them down in the basement and went off to Arizona for the winter and every spring she'd bring them up and bring them back to life and put them out into her yard. So this plant here is one of those uh, geraniums that we found in my mom's basement and I've kind of followed that tradition with um, putting it outside all summer and in the fall just before it gets too cold and the frost, hard frost come, I just uh, bring it into my heated garage, cut it right down, stick it in a dark corner and just leave it there. So geraniums are very, um, you know, tough plants. They're great flowers to grow here in uh, zone three Saskatchewan. So I like to take cuttings from this in the spring and kind of multiply it into different, uh, into more plants and share them with my daughters and my sister-in-law and just spread them around my garden so that I have a little bit of my mom everywhere I go outside. So I just want to show you how it's easy to take some cuttings off of a plant like this. As you can see, it has got some beautiful foliage. It's been in this ugly old pot for the last couple years. I think I did transplant it once since, um, since I've taken it from my mom's house and it just keeps coming back every year it's just beautiful so i'll just show you how to take some cuttings and we'll put them into some potting soil so i'm going to just look for a couple of spots here in the geranium we have some good growth coming with a couple different little growth points here this one here for example looks pretty good to be taking as a cutting so i'm going to just be using some shears you can also use a sharp knife and just cut it straight across So I've taken three cuttings here that I'm just going to pot up into this, these little containers today. So what you want to do before you pot them up is to remove some of this growth from the main stem here. So any of these big long ones that are down low, I'm just going to bend them and remove them. Just snap them off. And these little guys here too can just be pinched right off. So there, just to kind of shorten it up even a little bit more, I'm going to cut it just below this one growth point here. Just a straight cut. 
and then this can go into the dirt. This is the third one I took. As you can see, it's got a lot of pretty big leaves on it that we're gonna snap off. I think I'll even take this big one off. Pinch off these little leaves. I'm just gonna cut straight here. Then they're ready to go into a pot. So these are just uh, three inch containers that I have filled with some regular potting soil. Got them good and moist right now. I seen on a video I was watching that they like to be planted next, close to the edge of the pot. Don't know why, but we're gonna go with that. I'm just gonna make a little hole here. Stick the geranium in so a couple of those little growth points are under the dirt here. And then just to help kind of keep that moisture in and kind of create a little mini greenhouse effect, I'm gonna put some baggies over top of these. You'll see some moisture developing hopefully um, inside the baggie, that's good. Get a little humidity going. And these should be kept out of direct sunlight for the next two or three weeks while they develop a good root system. I'm planning that being it's the 1st of May that by early June, these will be ready to be potted up into bigger containers or somewhere into my flower beds. So that is it for uh, propagating geraniums, super easy. So I just wanted to take you outside for a little garden tour right now as well. As you can see by the uh, video here it was a super windy day when I was trying to video and so as a result I had to voice over so I wanted to share a story about this rock here um, it doesn't really look like anything special but it has a very special story behind it but first let's take a tour around my garden and see what's happening so this here is what I call my lasagna garden bed and I created this about three years ago and it's layers and layers of organic material. I used cardboard, lots of compost, lots of coffee grounds and kind of partially composted materials, sticks, twigs, uh, grass, clippings, leaves. And I just keep building and building on this every year. And I use this to plant all my annuals, all the pollinator flowers that I want to use to attract birds and butterflies and insects to my garden and I also try planting some perennials in here every year but every year if you make it but in a month or so this will be full of color and all sorts of different flowers and hopefully bring a lot of friendly insects and uh, pollinators to my garden. So I often wonder what my grandparents would think of my gardening techniques that I use these days. A lot of my techniques are permaculture type things. I don't do any rototilling. I don't do any digging. Everything is planted under straw or in containers. So this here was my two raised garden beds that I'm converting to container gardening just because I find it a little easier to maintain. So lots of tomatoes, beans, uh, cucumbers will be going into these containers um, along with a few other vegetables that make good companions. I've already got some things planted here in containers. These are all my lettuces that I have started about a week ago. And I'm starting to see a few sprouts coming through. I will also be doing all my root crops in containers, so beets, carrots, and turnips. And this is where I do the potato planting. So all my potatoes are planted under straw using the Ruth Stout method. 
So as a child on the May long weekend was always the uh, weekend when we planted the garden at my grandparents' farm and their methods were the very traditional type that I'm sure anybody my age would have used when they were younger and it was basically a huge field of beautiful dark soil. They rototilled it up every spring and rototilled it under every fall. And you know, it was a very strict method of growing. The rows had to be very straight and uh, everything had to be spaced out just so. So, you know, it was, it turned out well. My grandparents had a beautiful garden and, uh, but it was a lot of work for them to keep maintained, a lot of weeding, dealing with the weather. And uh, just uh, every year was all about survival. So you had to grow enough food to be able to preserve and can and freeze over the winter to get you through to the next year. But for me, gardening has been more of a hobby and something that I really enjoy doing. And my garden seems to be expanding a lot as well. Every year I get a little bit more containers and do a little bit more growing. So as I said, I just want to share a story about this rock and how it came to be in my yard. These large rocks are not native to our area at all. We don't have huge rocks like this at all, but this rock actually came from about 300 kilometers away from my great grandparents' homestead, located in a little town known as Laverna, Saskatchewan, which is right on the Alberta border. And this rock was actually the doorstep into their home. And when my grandmother got married and moved to farm uh, not too far from here, she actually got this rock removed from her parents' doorstep and brought it to their farm. And it was a doorstep in front of their house for many, many years. And then when my grandparents sold their farm and moved to town, my mom wanted to uh, keep that tradition of the rock being um, on the farm and got my dad to loaded up into the bucket of the tractor and drove it to their farm and she used it in a similar way that I have here um, just as a kind of a focal point in her flower bed and when my parents uh, retired and moved to town and sold the farm uh, shortly afterwards uh, my dad and mom showed up in our yard with the tractor and this huge rock in the bucket and uh, they just said where do you want it so at that time we weren't really prepared I said well just put it up against this post here for now and uh, then we'll find a place for it so the rock has actually never moved from its original placing here in my yard and I've kind of just decorated around it with some flowers and an old cream can and it sits at the edge of my flower bed so I think it looks great there and I'm really happy to have be the fourth generation of having this rock in our yard and hopefully one day one of my three daughters will uh, pick it up and move it to their place and keep the tradition going. So I hope you enjoyed listening to some of the memories I have of my mother and grandmother and to all the mothers out there on earth and in heaven. I wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you for watching.